So today we're going to look at um, repairing a shorted out cable on the uh, Logitech G9X. Uh, you see it sitting here next to my like seven year old G5 which is still going strong. Never had a problem with it. Um, thought I was going to upgrade to the G9X so I bought a broken one on eBay. Uh, the description said it was supposed to have the shorted out cable. I thought it would be a pretty easy fix. Come to find out the uh, laser on it is broken, a little laser unit, so there's pretty much nothing I can do to repair it. But regardless, I wanted to make this video and I went through all the steps of repairing the, uh, the cable short that people are having. So I just wanted to show how to do that. So real quick, um, we'll just take a look at what we're going to need for this project. You're going to need a small Phillips and flathead screwdriver. I've got a little kit here that has them all. Um, you're going to want a plastic bag or something, maybe some wax paper to put the mouse feet in. Of course, a little Tupperware bowl for your hardware and screws. Uh, a good hobby knife or an X-Acto knife to get through heat shrink and things like that. Um, also, are going to need a soldering iron, nothing fancy. I've got the cheap little Radio Shack one here. And, uh, of course, some solder for that. Uh, some heat shrink, a little small one, a little bigger one, various sizes. Um, trusty electrical tape, of course, and uh, lighter uh, for the heat shrink. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the feet, the little Teflon pads, so we can get to these four screws. Um, there's two little slots you can get a flathead screwdriver under, and there's one on the front waiting for the autofocus. It's right there. So you can get a little screwdriver under there. And on the rear pad, the little slot on a uh, caddy corner to that first one. And there it goes. So the next slot will be right there. And uh, you just need to get those pads off. Um, I recommend buying some new pads before you do this. You can get them on eBay for like two bucks shipped from China. Just look for G9X feet. Um, the reason being when you take them off you'll see here I destroyed my factory ones um, there's the Teflon there and then there's a the little spongy part underneath it so it's possible if you ch can get it all in one swipe um, it's possible to get those off and reuse them if you're really careful but it's probably a lot easier and a lot less trouble to just buy some new ones so now we're gonna take uh, these four screws off and actually, I get a little ahead of myself here. Um, before we get to those screws, we're going to want to take off the outer shell of the mouse and also the weight tray. So I'm going to take these two screws out, and then I'll, I'll back up and go do those two things. So obviously, always handy to have a little Tupperware or something to put your hardware in. So you just push this little button on the back, as I'm sure you already know to pop that shell off and then of course just push on the weight tray and it'll pop out of there so now that we have those two things done we'll go ahead and get back to those screws so I already had the top two off we're gonna get the bottom two now there's that and the fourth screw. So that is the last screw holding it together. And you do want to be careful when you take that last screw out because there is a pretty thin ribbon. Uh, you'll see here in a minute that's going to be holding the two halves of the mouse together. So you see the top just lifts off here from the bottom portion. And just carefully lift those apart towards the right and open it kind of like a book you'll see that little ribbon back there that you want to be sure not to damage. So it is possible, um, as you'll see me do here, to just kind of lay down the mouse like this. And uh, I've already taken this apart once, so um, it's not going to be very difficult for me to get this ribbon out. Um, and I'll get in here close so you can see it better. So if you've ever taken apart a laptop, you're going to be familiar with how this ribbon is held in. Um, I've already kind of pried that little thing out of there when I took it apart the first time. 
However, if you have some little needle nose pliers, you can just pull that little piece up and swing it to the left a little bit and that will allow the ribbon to come free and the brown part will stay uh, attached. But as you can see there, I just popped it up with the screwdriver. So if you do use a screwdriver to pry it off, definitely be careful that it doesn't go flying across the room. And um, also if you use a screwdriver to pry it off, obviously be careful that wherever your fulcrum is, you're not gonna be destroying your hardware. So be wary of that. Probably best to use some little needle nose pliers to get that guy off. So now we have um, six screws to get out. So that was the first one there I just pointed to on the board. And the second two on the board are snuck down in here behind the wheel. So there's the second one there. And then uh, I'm trying to get an angle on this other one. There it is on the board behind the wheel there. And then there are three screws on the wheel we're going to take out. There's one, two, and three. You're going to have a total of six screws and two different sizes. Uh, the ones on the wheel assembly are slightly longer. And also that um, little crossbar there I just pointed to is going to be loose when you take those wheel the screws out, so be careful of that. And also this little black piece here that I'm pointing to is uh, going to come loose when you take that screw out, so be careful not to lose that. You also want to be aware um, there's going to be a little spring here and a little spring behind that black piece there. Uh, I've read that those can come loose. I didn't have any trouble with that personally, but um, again, just be aware that those little springs are going to be under that wheel assembly and you want to make sure you don't lose those. So like I said, those uh, the three longer screws are the ones in the wheel assembly and the three sc shorter screws are the uh, the first three that I pointed to that go on the board itself. So we'll go ahead and get those six screws out. And I'm gonna lay these here and take out one short one from the board and one long one from the wheel. And I'm gonna try to zoom in on those so you can compare them. Magnetic screwdrivers, it's a love-hate relationship. So there's the two screws, the, there's the focus. So as you can see, the right screw is just a teeny bit shorter than the left screw. And again, the right screw is the, uh, the three short ones go on the board and the three longer ones go on the wheel. So we'll put those back in our little Tupperware and we'll take out the remaining four screws. And you'll see here, um, I believe this is the, the second screw holding that little bar on. So um, just be, be careful you don't lose that little black bar. And I think that's the last one on my wheel assembly. So we'll take that little black bar off. If you can see, um, well, if you look at it, one of the, one of the little feet on there is uh, shaped a little different so remember that one goes on the right side and then I'm trying to zoom in here to show you the the little black piece to be careful for and also be careful when you take this off there are uh, s some springs on the bottom mine didn't come loose but I've heard that those can come loose and you can lose them so definitely be careful of those springs as well 
and this little black piece is the loose part and there it is so you want to be be extra careful not to lose that so now it's just a matter of getting out this little rubber grommet that holds the cord in and the uh, board is loose now so you'll see just that little grommet slides up and uh, the board will slide out and you'll see that little exposed area on the uh, the wire there is supposedly our our problem spot so I'm gonna spend some time trying to zoom in on that and it's gonna take a while but you get the idea So to get this board, um, or the cable rather, by itself, we just need to get this little connector off. Again, probably better to use some kind of little needle nose pliers here, but I was too lazy to get up, so I just kind of pried it out with a small screwdriver and then just pulled it out with my fingers. Um, you want to be a little bit gentle with it. Obviously, it's going to be a pain if you accidentally pull any of those little wires out, so just be careful with that. And now to uh, get this rubber grommet out of the way, um, best way I've seen is to just go ahead and cut it off. Um, if you wanted to mess around with it, you could try to slide it up the cable uh, to get it out of your way while you work. But um, if you make a clean cut with a, a sharp knife like you see me doing here, you can just kind of take it off and... Uh, so long as the cut is clean, you can get it back together and the mouse will go back together just fine. So now that I've got the top split off, it'll just come out right like that. And uh, take a look at the plug and be sure you put it back on the right way. Um, otherwise, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. So be sure you get it back on the, the cable the right way when you go ahead and reassemble the mouse. And now there's uh, this little wire clip on here that holds on the uh, braided outer portion of the cable. Um, so we'll just go ahead and pry that up with either a small flathead or the utility, uh, hobby knife. You'll see I use both. So now we just need to um, go ahead and cut this heat shrink off. And again, we're going to use our hobby knife for that. And uh, just make a small incision, get it started, and then you can fold it back around on itself to, to help you pull it off.
So you can just go ahead and discard that heat shrink. You're not going to need it for anything. Now, um, this is where I'm starting to learn that I didn't have any short in my mouse. But assuming you did, if you see that black cable that's exposed there, that's more than likely, from what I understand, where you're going to have your short. And uh, those wires are going to be frayed. Maybe even some of the colored ones, but more than likely just that black one. So um, we're going to go ahead and cut off this little piece of uh, material here and start working our way back up the other side of the cable to expose more of the wiring there. Uh, as you do so, you're going to notice that um, that black cable is connected to um, some wiring that wraps around the shielding on the colored cables. So it's kind of going to look like a mess when you pull it out of there, uh, obviously, especially if yours is shorted. but Bear in mind, all those wires you see me exposing there are what that black wire is supposed to connect to. So there are also actually two black cables. Um, the one you see on the bottom here is the outermost cable on that little connector that we pulled off the PCB. And the uh, one right next to it is the inner black cable, which uh, is the one you see in the top bundle that's connected to the color one. So be sure you don't not connected to the color ones, but bundled with them. So be sure you don't get those mixed up. So um, what I did there was just went ahead and cut my black cable uh, to simulate the short, even though, like I said, I don't have a short in it. And uh, now I'm just prepping the heat shrink, um, putting a bigger one on to go over the uh, braided portion of the cable once all the soldering is done and putting a little piece of heat shrink on the uh, the shorted out wire that I just cut that um, you'll be repairing. So got that all cleaned up now and you'll notice that when we solder these together we're going to be left with a lot of excess on the colored cables up here. Um, so one easy way to get around that is to just go ahead and tie a knot in those and that'll kind of compensate for the lost space. Um, I actually messed up a little bit. You'll see later after I solder it and I um, had way too much excess still on the black so I could even shorten that up. But you get the idea. You just put that little knot in there and that'll clean up some of the extra cable for you. So these are all set to go ahead and solder now and I'll get that all set up. Um, I don't solder frequently. I don't consider myself to be very good at it. So uh, I apologize if these welds are horrible and definitely don't necessarily pay too much attention to my technique. So the last few steps, um, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up. Basically, we're just going to solder these two, two ends together. Um, and then after that also sped up, we're just going to go ahead and apply all that heat shrink. Um, so not a whole lot to see here towards the end, but if you want to finish it out, go ahead. Um, obviously I'm assuming if you got this far that you're, uh, you're going to be able to go ahead and put the whole thing back together on your own. So, uh, if you need to, you know, go back to the beginning of the video and reference where things were and how they went and, and such. So anywho, hopefully this will help someone out there. All right. Like. 